Okay, got a lot of things. Let's let's talk. Got a new car mount. Don't have to hold the camera. Can just have my hands be free. I can drive. I can explain myself. We can talk. We can talk, internet. We can talk about this this fucking movie. So tonight I went to see Pacific Rim Uprising. <laughs> Which I think has been out for I don't know what a couple couple weeks now, maybe. Um, disclaimer: I liked the first one. I liked the first one a lot. It, was it cheesy? Yes. Was it a little dumb? Yes. But that was kind of the point, right? You know, you you go and you see a movie about giant robots fighting giant monsters. Yeah, you expect a little bit of dumb. Okay, that much is to be expected. But. This movie was just was just dumb. Not good dumb. Bad dumb. Real bad dumb. Uh, <laughs> so let's okay, let's start from the beginning. Um, major issues with the film. One, plot. I was not at all like feeling this this story. Because like let's okay, so let's let's break it down, shall we? Um so the movie begins and Basically, it's like, okay, ten years later, we're, uh, we're following, uh, uh, Idris Elba's son, who's played by, uh, you know, uh, why can't I think of his name? Oh, God. Uh, oh, Jesus. Uh, uh Finn from Star Wars. <laughs> uh, I know his name, and I can't think of it now. Shit. I'm gonna look like a fucking idiot on the internet. Whatever. I look like an, an, an idiot on the internet every day. Doesn't matter. Point is, so fucking... Uh, so fucking Finn from Star Wars is is Idris Elba, Idris Elba's son, and and he's like, uh, war's over. Ten years. Okay, fine, fine premise. Ten years. Ten years have passed since the first movie. The war has ended, as we saw. The kaiju are no more. They, or at least the rift has been closed. The interdimensional portal between our world and theirs completely, completely severed. No more monsters. Okay. So really, at first you're like, all right. So there's no threat. So the movie has a problem in that they have to start to introduce a threat. And this is where things just go completely off the rails because for the first half of the movie, nothing happens. And I mean, yes, things happen, quote unquote, like stuff is set up, ideas are introduced. Like I'm not saying it's completely nothing, but mostly nothing happens. And what I mean by that is like, we're, so, so they're like, so they're like, what if Finn from Star Wars is like a party guy? He lives in this area where he steals shit. Um, and then, oh, by the way, him being a thief and like a criminal and stealing shit, besides the fact that it's like his setup, the whole thing, let me just say, the whole thing feels like a Saturday morning cartoon setup, is what it felt like. It completely felt like, like it was very much like, he's the retired son of a, you know, of a blah, blah, but then he does some bad stuff and he gets caught up with the military, but the military isn't sure because they're thinking of using remote controlled drones instead of real pilots, and the real pilots are like, oh, you can't do that, like, it's every goddamn stereotype, like every military, every, like, like, action -y, military premise setup stereotype that you could possibly think of. It's all here. Like, I, I, it, I, if I ever do, like, a long-form review where I actually watch and, like, have footage to show you of this movie, like, I'll bet you I can probably do, like, a counter, like, of every single fucking trope that they used. Every trope is there. Every single trope. You name it, it's there. So Finn from Star Wars is stuck in the military. And, and he has this, like, girl that he finds. Just kind of finds her. Turns out she's really fucking good at building shit. You know, she's... She's, like, 16 years old, and she's built her own Jaeger. Uh, it's a very small Jaeger, but she's built it without, like, any troubles whatsoever. Just, you know, fine. Again, a trope number 362 of the action movie. The young, smart person who just knows how to do everything no matter what, and is just born in a genius. And she's a she's a she's a recruit. She's a cadet on the on the Jaeger program, right? Where they have to like they're gonna train her to be the new Jaeger pilot. Okay, cool premise, I guess. Like that makes sense. Um, too bad it took a fucking hour before anything happened. I don't know if it was exactly an hour, but it felt like an hour. Okay, it felt like an hour before anything at all happened. So 
they're in the military. The drone thing is happening. What's her name? The lady builds the drones, right? She's like, I'm gonna build drone Jaegers, and Jaegers are gonna be no more pilots. We're just gonna, we don't even need deploy time because the Jaegers are just gonna be there because they don't need to eat, they don't need to sleep. They're drones, they're robots. Cool, fine. Um, so, so they bring the drones in, and oh no, no, I'm sorry. So, first of all, so first of all, there was an evil, there was an evil Jaeger, um, like that was the threat, that was the first threat because you're, they're, they're doing this like thing where they're like, we're gonna vote on whether or not we should use drone Jaegers. Um, all of the super government or whatever, you know, whatever the new government is in the future, all of the government's gonna be there. Um, and, you know, we're gonna vote whether it's a good idea to use uh, drone Jaegers. So, so they're in this big thing and just from, from the ocean, where, who built, we don't know, but here come the bad guy in a Jaeger. <laughs> he starts fighting um, the new not dip, not Gypsy Danger in this movie. The, I think the 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 the, the, the giant Jaeger that that uh, Finn Boyega John Boyega fuck <laughs> John Boyega pilots this new Jaeger. <laughs> I'm gonna have to like edit that in from the beginning. Like um, John Boyega pilots this new uh, Jaeger called Gypsy Avenger. I'm assuming it's in relation to the old Gypsy Danger. It's avenging the new, whatever. I don't know. Um, so they're in this Jaeger and they're just standing duty, right? They're only they're only there as like an honor guard. They're not really there to do anything other than look nice <clears throat> and stand and be like, we're Jaegers, like we're really cool. <clears throat> and this bad Jaeger comes out from the ocean and attacks. And that's your first threat of the movie. That's the first conflict is robot versus robot. And you're like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of down with this. I don't mind robot versus robot fighting. I mean, you know, I've watched other things that include robots versus robots. Cool. I'm down for a little Megas XLR. I can get into that. But then you're like, but didn't I come here to see monsters? Wasn't the whole point was I came to see giant monsters and there isn't any. Um, so, okay, um, so that gets, like, settled and dealt with. They, they meet this giant monster Yoger Jaeger, giant Yoger, they meet the giant Jaeger monster, Jaeger Meister, I keep, god damn it, Del Toro, why'd you come up with these weird fucking names? No, so they meet the, the evil Jaeger in, like, the Arctic or whatever, they fight him on some ice, it's cool, it's a, I, I gotta say this right now, good action sequences, everything's very well choreographed, CG, is tolerable. I mean, it's CG. Everything looks CG. You know it's a giant CG robot. You know it's a giant CG monster. It's never once where you go, that looks like a real monster. Like, I, but whatever. You didn't in the first one. That's fine. <clears throat> That's not necessary for a good giant robot movie. Um, so they defeat the thing, and they break open its head because they're going like, who's the pilot? And the pilot turns out to be a kaiju brain? Like, just, but... But as the, the uh, what's his name? I don't remember. Herman, I think, is his name. The, the character who's not Charlie Day, the scientist character who's not Charlie Day, he's like, the only problem is this Jaeger material, it has originated from Earth. It did not come from the dimension that the monsters came from. So this was, like, genetically engineered, like, first of all, plausibility. What the fuck? I will suspend my disbelief and allow me to believe that human beings could build giant fucking robots. I will suspend my disbelief long enough to believe that that's something we as a society could probably accomplish given enough technology. I will not believe that genetic engineering had advanced so far that some guy even which okay spoilers Charlie Day turns out to be evil. He's been possessed. Remember in the first movie where him and um Herman or whatever. Remember when they, they drifted with a kaiju brain in order to figure out stuff? Well, it turned out that he accidentally opened up his brain to be like, kind of like being manipulated. Like he's being brainwashed, basically, by the kaiju. Like, they're, he's not human anymore. He's now, like, half kaiju, I guess. Like, inside here, anyway. Um, so he's the bad guy. So it turns out that he's been genetically engineering his own homemade kaiju materials to, to create these evil Jaegers. And, and the plot twist turns out to be that all of the drones that this one chick was designing, all of these supposedly robotic drones, everything inside of their head, all of the fake, you know, computery brains that were controlling them, they were actually kaiju brains inside that then broke out, took over the whole fucking 
robot somehow and became kaiju robots. Kaiju fucking robots. Okay, all right. Now I'm in like this complete and utter shock going, what the fuck am I watching? What is the fucking plot of this goddamn movie? Whatever. I'll accept kaiju robots, fine. So we find out Charlie Day is evil because he's been fucking a kaiju brain. Like, not not like I'm just saying that to be weird. I mean, literally, it's fucking developed in that he has a wife whose name is Angie, and it's a kaiju brain in a fucking vat. I'm shouting, I'm sorry. Uh, so he's been fucking this kaiju, and that's what's been giving him the mind control. All right, whatever. So now the kaiju drones are like breaking up all the shatter domes. They're like, fuck, fuck big Jaegers. No more giant robots. Break them apart. Destroy them all. There's only like three left in the entire world. Cool. <clears throat> um, and then, then they, then they, then the, the, the pilots are like, all right, well, we got to fucking stop. Oh, and so it turns out that the robots were just using the, like the ion beams or whatever the fuck all the, 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 the power supply inside of their, their chests in order to, uh, like, as, like, create a beam to create their own artificial rift so that the dimensions are open again and the kaijus can escape, like, through the ocean. So that's the plot. That's, all right, cool. It took us an hour to get there, but fine, that's the plot. The robots are opening up a new portal so that the kaiju monsters can come out. I get it. I get what you're doing. And whatever. So they let the monsters out. They shut down the robots just in time for most of the monsters for the portals to shut and cut them in half. So most of the monsters are dead. Three kaiju, however, managed to escape. That was the middle, I guess, yeah. Three kaiju have escaped the portal. So all the pilots are like, shit, we've only got like four Jaegers in the entire world. Um, and and we all the pilots are dead. The only ones left are the cadets and like uh, John Boyega and some other guy. I don't know who the fuck he is. I'm assuming he's an actor. No offense to that guy if he ever sees this video. He was a fine actor. He did a good job with his performance. Um, so they're like, well, we'll put all these kaiju fucking destroy machines together. We'll beat up the kaiju. So they do. Um, at least they think they do. Uh, <clears throat> they kill the thing. Um, they think they kill the thing, but they don't. Charlie Day, who somehow... Oh, I, okay. So it turns out that the kaiju, this whole time, even from the first movie, it turns out that the kaiju, their whole plan... This whole time, they never actually cared about destroying our cities. They only ever wanted to make it to Mount Fuji in, in Japan. Because as it turns out, kaiju blood, when reacted with rare earth elements, creates this volatile explosion that could potentially decimate all life on planet Earth and terraform it, which I think was the plot. They were trying to terraform our planet. I do think I remember that from the first movie. So that was their whole point. That kind of fits. It's a sort of a retroactive like, like, uh, retconning of the, of the plot, but I'll, I'll accept it. I don't care. It's a movie about giant fucking monsters. Cool. So it's going to Mount Fuji. So somehow Charlie fucking Day is in fucking Japan. He's like, we see that he's turned evil. He launches his plan and then he's like, but, um, fuck you and runs away. And somehow he's in Japan now. He's standing on top of a building and he's got a little iPad. And from that iPad, he's like controlling the monster. I think, I think the monster's being controlled via iPad. I don't know. It's not 100% clear, but if that's the case, holy shit, that's stupid. <laughs> so, so, what happens is the three kaiju all converge on Tokyo. The, the, the Jaegers are getting their asses kicked because they're obviously, like, there's two good pilots and then all the rest of them are untrained. They're doing the best they can. Like, they're keeping up, but they're, they're not winning. Like, they're clearly just holding them at bay and they keep, like, getting all the buildings are blowing up. Um, and so, so Charlie Day's character's like, all right, this clearly isn't fucking working. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send out some like nano robots, which nano for the, the, the kaiju in our reality, they're probably all human sized. They're like, like just droids, regular robots. They're all running out through the city and they, they diverge around and then they fucking cut the kaiju apart. Just like, just cut them apart and then stitch it back together. They cut three kaiju apart, make one big mega kaiju, which was the name on the iPad that Charlie Day was holding. It just says mega kaiju. Like that's the big fucker. So the big fucker is like, fuck off, kills like one of the, one of the, one of the fucking cadets dies. Too bad we didn't fucking get to know them. 
All right, again, I'm going to get into that in a second. We don't know any of these characters, really, at all. Um, so whatever. All right, plot. To end the plot section, they, they, the kaiju almost makes it to Mount Fuji, destroys all of the robots except Gypsy and Venger, and, like, they basically decide, hey, we're going to... We're going to use the new rocket thrusters that you've been developing because you found out that the vile tile, like, fucking kaiju blood, when mixed with the rare earth elements, you figured out that if, if we fucking blow that shit, you know, we can use it as rockets. They're like, if we attach this rocket to the fucking Gypsy Avenger, we'll shoot them up into space, right above the atmosphere, and we'll just let gravity take over. Like, we will just drop this fucking robot, just this hunk of fucking metal, right on his face, which, good plan, because... It works. Like, I'll give them that. Like, they could have been like, well, it didn't work, but it, it worked. Like, it literally tore the monster in half because that's probably, yeah, fucking terminal velocity, probably tons and tons of steel and iron just <laughs> right in your face. Yeah, you're going to fucking die. Um, so it kills the monster. Monster never makes it to Mount Fuji. Day is saved. Cool. End of movie. And I'm not kidding when I say end of movie. No, like, like epilogue scene. No, like... Like, okay, there's, like, there's Jean Boyega and the little, the girl cadet, I don't know her, I don't remember her name, like, they're together, and they're, like, you know, like, woo, we did it, we saved the day, and, like, they're playing in the snow, because they're on Mount Fuji, and then the movie just kind of ends, and then that's it, like, the logo, just, there's not, no of the other characters, none of the other characters show up in the ending, nobody else says anything, or does anything, it's just them going, woo, we did it, not even, like, a shot, I mean, there was, like, some shots, but not even, like, like, all the shots, so... So to conclude the plot, like, that's just it. That's just what happens. Fucking John Boyega and her, like, celebrate on top of Mount Fuji, and that's the end of the fucking movie. Um, oh, there's a little, like, I don't know if there was a stinger, because I didn't stay past the credits. I was just, I was kind of, like, perturbed by this movie a little. Um, there might have been a stinger, but there was one last, like, end scene right after the cut to the title, which was... Uh, Charlie Day had been like subdued and, and held captive by the, the, the PCC or whatever the fuck the police force of giant robots was called. And they, uh, they, 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 they're like, John Boyega like walks in and like interviews him and, he, and he's like, you, you think that this is over? You think that there isn't going to be a Pacific Rim three? You're fucking wrong, bitch. And you're like, okay, you know, gang, gang builds a kaiju. Like it's Charlie Day. Charlie Day is the best part of this movie. Like. Like, props to Charlie Day. Like, no matter what, no matter what else happens, like, props to Charlie fucking Day um, for a really fantastic performance, just in general. Movie just ends. Let's go over the problems that I had with it so that you understand where I'm coming. The biggest problems with the movie were, A, the pacing. Um, the movie really did, it was just, it was start and stop and start and stop and start and stop and just it was the whole movie was this like you'd get this scene going where you'd have these action elements happening and you'd be like all right i'm in the action i'm ready i'm ready and then it would smash cut to something else somewhere else and it'd be like a comedy scene and the tone would just uh, gone gone blasted out of oblivion just gone and 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 i mean this like like okay like there's and, and there's like emotional scenes where john boyega is like uh talking to the cadet kid character and he's like explaining to her like things about like you know this is how I used to be you know I was I was a troublemaker I was this and then he'd like look and he'd like almost almost stare it to the camera and be like but I'm a fucking handsome boy you know what I mean like a joke like he'd crack a joke at the end of this very serious monologue and he does this he does this twice because the other time he's talking to another character and he's talking about his partner his drift partner and how like he talks to the drift partner he's talking to some girl about him and like and says blah 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 you know he's holding me back he didn't like me but he's pretty fucking handsome you know what I mean like he's like that's I'm paraphrasing that's a line in the movie he's like but he's pretty handsome I mean he is handsome that's true but it was unnecessary to the scene it's just like an unneeded joke and then okay and then part two um is 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 unnecessary backstory in that I should say no backstory is given for some elements and no character development is given for others. Some elements are over exemplified in backstory. For example, there is a scene where Charlie Day and the Herman guy, I don't, again, I don't remember his name, I'm sorry. Charlie Day talks to the other scientist character and he's like, oh, by the way, 
Do you remember that time that we mind melded with a fucking giant monster? Because I remember that time. That's why I'm saying it out loud, even though it's this thing that we both share, and I shouldn't have to mention it, but because this is a movie, this is a sequel, some people might not have seen the first movie. So do you remember? Like he's like I, again, paraphrasing, but I, and I'm overexemplifying for the joke, but like that's something he says in the movie. And this happens a lot. Like, there's all these scenes where, like, people are, like, explaining. Like, like yes, Pacific Rim 1 was a thing. I get it. You don't have to re I'm I, I Again, I understand. There are audience members out there who might not have seen Pacific Rim 1. I get that. I'm not saying that that's not something you can't talk about. But the problem becomes you don't do it in such a clunky, ham-fisted way where you're like, by the way, do you remember... Pacific Rim 1? Like, it's like taking a round block of information in a square hole, and you're like, do you remember Pacific Rim? Like, and making it fit. And it, it fits, but you're like, uh, so, and then, what I mean by character development, what I mean by, like, haphazard, poor, shitty character development, is the fact that none of these characters have anything... Uh, John Boyega is developed. Um, which, okay, fine. He's the main character. I would hope to God that the main character gets developed. John Boyega has a backstory, has, like, admittedly, a lot of no... A lot of setup with no payoff. Like I said, he's a thief in the beginning. That never really pays off. He never has to, like, use his criminal. Other than that's how he gets involved with the military again is because it's either jail or the military, so he picks the military, and then it's just like, whatever, he's a good guy again. No more crime. So, fine, whatever. But, like, his drift partner, like, like John Boyega, that's the thing. There's a lot of talking about it. There's a lot of, th the one criminal sin of movie making is show, don't tell. And there's so much telling in this movie. There's so much, do you remember this? Do you remember this part? Things that these characters should not have to say out loud because if these things happen to them, they should just know and remember. So, to, to conclusion, to wrap it up, because I now just looked at the time, I've been recording for 26 minutes, to wrap it up, Pacific Rim 2 it fails where Pacific Rim 1... Pacific Rim 1 was a movie where things happened, um, good characters were established, and I understood who they were without needing necessarily, un, like, like overabundant, over-encumbering uh, over -encumbering, um, dialogue and backstory. What's happening?! <laughs> Who are you people? Why do I care? Just let's fucking throw in every anime, every fucking American, Japanese trope you can and just mush it together. Put like the blandest characters possible inside that and then take John Boyega, the only charismatic actor, um, and also Charlie Day. We'll take two charismatic, well-known actors. We'll put them on top, like a little topping to this shit cake that we've created. And we will just, that's how we'll sell our movie. So to wrap it up, to conclude this entire rant, I'm sure I'll edit it down when I get inside, but to conclude this entire thing, Pacific Rim 2 was really dumb. Terrible pacing, terrible character development, terrible dialogue, telling, not showing, and, 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 and it took us what felt like two hours just to fight a giant monster. And the last 10, 20 minutes of the movie was the monster fight when it could have been most of the movie, which Pacific Rim 1, like, there was stuff going on between the monster fighting, but there was still monster fighting. I went to see a monster movie, and all I got was nothing. It was stupid. Bad dumb. Oh my god. Pacific Rim 2. 2 out of 10. Like, sincerely, 2 out of 10. Like, I did not enjoy that at all. If you haven't seen it yet, I say, I don't think you should go see it. It's, it's a confusing mess that has a few fun moments. It's like, I guess the best analogy is, it's like, what if you got on the world's shittiest roller coaster? Like, there's like a few good loop-de-loops that make you go, woo! But most of the roller coaster is sitting in a room talking about being on a roller coaster and remembering, boy, fucking, I remember roller coasters when they were good. Roller coasters were great. Bad dumb, two out of 10, Pacific Rim 2, did not like. That's all I got. That's it, folks. So Holly's Car Ride Reviews. I, I hope that didn't wake anybody up. I'm sorry. Two honks out of ten.